Google Cloud External HTTPS Load Balancer enables you to run and scale your services behind a single external IP address. It can balance HTTP and HTTPS traffic across multiple backend instances across multiple regions. It distributes the HTTP and HTTPS traffic to backends hosted on a variety of Google Cloud platforms such as Google Compute Engine, Google Kubernetes Engine, Cloud Storage, and so on, as well as external backends on the internet. The load balancer log entries contain information that would be useful for monitoring and troubleshooting your HTTPS requests. In this video, you will learn how to use external HTTPS load balancer logs to troubleshoot and resolve 502 errors encountered with the load balancer. Before we troubleshoot a live 502 error, let's understand some possible causes for 502 errors with the help of the status details field that exists in the HTTPS load balancing log entries. The status details field contains information on why the load balancer returned a particular HTTP status. It will have a value for both successful and failed requests. For a 502 error, this field contains one of the following values which indicates the cause for the failure. Failed to connect to backend means that the load balancer was unable to establish a connection with the backend likely because the backend is not listening on the specific port. Fail to pick backend indicates that the load balancer was unable to pick a backend because all backends are unhealthy. Backend connection closed before data sent to client indicates that the backend unexpectedly closed its connection to the load balancer before the response was proxy to the client. This will be the focus in our video. Backend timeout indicates that the backend did not respond within the service timeout period configured for the load balancer. Response sent by backend means that the 502 error response was sent by the backend itself. All right, let's dive into a quick demo and learn how to troubleshoot and resolve a live 502 error. When you observe 502 errors with the load balancer, do the following. Go to the Logs Explorer page in the Google Cloud Console. Choose Cloud HTTP Load Balancer from the Resources drop-down menu. To view the logs, Highlight the forwarding rule associated with your specific load balancer and choose the particular URL map. Narrow down the search to a specific time range during which the issue was observed. In our example, we will set it as the last hour. Filter the logs to check 502 errors in the last hour. Hmm, the logs show that there were several occurrences of 502 errors. Open one of the log entries to get more details about the 502 error. Scroll down and check out the value of the status details field inside the JSON payload. This field suggests why the load balancer returned the HTTP status code 502. In our example, the status details field has the value backend connection closed before data sent to client. This indicates that the backend unexpectedly or abruptly closed its connection to the load balancer before the response was proxied to the client. Typically, the backend instance will close the TCP connection abruptly if it has a lower TCP keep alive timeout compared to the load balancer's TCP keep alive timeout, which is by default 10 minutes. To confirm this, let's check the TCP keep alive timeout set on the backend instance. Go to Network Services load balancing and choose the load balancer. In our example, it is test HTTP LB. This load balancer is configured with backend service Nginx backend with the backend VM installed with Nginx web server. Let us SSH into the VM and check the TCP keep alive timeout configured on the web server. The value for TCP keep alive timeout can be viewed in the slash etc slash nginx slash nginx.com file. There you go. The value for the keep alive timeout is configured to be 1 seconds, which is much lower than the keep alive timeout value configured on the load balancer, which is 10 minutes. This is the cause for backend to prematurely close the TCP connection with the load balancer and load balancer eventually returning 502 errors to the client. It is recommended that the keep alive timeout on the backend should always be configured with a higher value compared to the keep alive timeout on the load balancer. 
To resolve this issue, increase the keep alive timeout value on the backend VMs. We will set this value to 650 seconds. To learn more information about the values in the status details field and to troubleshoot and resolve other common issues with Google Cloud external HTTPS load balancers, check out this documentation. Thanks for watching. Thank you.